Yeah, be nice. <laughs> Testing. Oh yeah, Jack Daniels, eh? Okay, welcome back. Two more to go. Uh, I'm last, unfortunately. Um, but Lewis is going to go, and then I think instead of just having me straight away, uh, or sorry, Kim and me straight away, um, the, I think we're probably going to open the bar. So in, not in between Lewis's talk, but maybe just before it, or in between me and Lewis, uh, you can go for a drink at the bar after the golf if you want an apple. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's all funner when you're drunk. So if you can get a drink, have a drink. Okay, I definitely would. You know what, guys? I'm excited for this. I really am. But the people I want to see this the most are not here right now. Where the hell's Amy? Like, come on. My, my right hand woman is meant to be here and she's probably off getting a drink. Anyway, guys. I just want to say a massive thank you all for showing up today. It means a hell of a lot to me. Uh, all things considered, you know, a couple of months ago, not a couple of months ago, I say that, a couple of years ago, something like this would have torn me apart, would have, would have scared me into the point of inaction, and it would have crippled me and my confidence, my anxiety, everything would have been through the roof, right? And I used to be a, a gym instructor for like a leisure center all around the you know, west coast of Scotland and stuff. And see doing things like inductions, getting in front of people, taking them through, you know, a gym tour or teaching them a program or something as simple as that, before it, my heart would be racing, you know. I'd be there, I'd be scared. I'd actually have to even smoke cigarettes sometimes in between uh, my shifts because I was like, fuck me, I need to de-stress. I need to relax after all this nonsense going on. But what really was the problem was just, I hadn't really stepped into my own yet. I hadn't really got to a point where I felt good with myself and today we're going to we're going to have a wee bit of a deep dive but I want to open on that because something like this like it means a lot to be in front of so many beautiful sexy people and uh, <laughs> be able to speak fairly confidently I guess. So what we're going to get stuck into do uh, to do today is uh, the cause and effect okay. The cause and effect is something I've been you know manifesting things about and working on for the last wee while and something that's always been a massive motivator for me is understanding the potential downsides of not actually taking action on your long-term health and fitness over the grand scheme of uh, your entire life, okay? So let's dive in. So what do you think today's talk is about? Similar to Christian, I do want to get some engagement. If I say, do you want to come up and we'll have a wee chat? I want you to do that. I, wa I want to make sure everyone here is as present as I am when I'm looking at all these lovely, fa uh, lovely faces. So take a little second, guys. Chat amongst you. I'm going to have a wee walk around and just uh, put my smile in front of your face and just ask you guys, what do you think today is about? So I'll chat amongst your groups and uh, I'll maybe ask some questions. So what do you think it's about? What do you think it's about? It's actually about the secret to go a lager cock. <laughs> People can hear this in the mic, in the toilet. <laughs> what are we thinking? What are we thinking? Do we know what it's about? It's my talk. Was it about what brought you to this stage? What caused you to go on this journey? Mm, not right, not wrong, but very good, very good. Ladies, what do we think today's about? That is very true, very true. Yes, bang on, bang on. <laughs> Lovely. And the ghettos, five minutes down to the talk. Thank you very much for joining us. What are we thinking, guys? What are we thinking? What's today all about? We got a wee bit of an idea? Small things done consistently over time add up to huge things over time. It can be good things or bad things, but there's no other things. So. Yeah, kind of on the money. We'll get there. We'll get there. We all had a wee think. Fantastic. What do we think? <laughs> that is definitely, that's definitely, that's, that's on money. That is definitely on the money. All right.
decided to join. Okay, team, we had a wee, uh, a wee, a wee mingle, we chat about what is, what is today all about? What is today all about? I'm buzzing. I really am to get stuck into this because it might be different from anything you've ever thought because we're usually very motivated externally in, instead of intrinsically, essentially. But have you ever wanted to improve how you look and hope of bettering yourself through building confidence and certainty in your life? Has anyone ever, has anyone ever done that? Just show me a, a round of hands and don't look at my, my sweaty armpits. I'm nervous a wee bit, guys. But yeah, a nice wee uh, bunch of numbers coming through. Fantastic, I love that, love that. So another little uh, quick fire question. Have you ever done something or yeah, have you ever done something repetitively or consistently without getting a result? You know, you're hitting your head off a wall, you're not getting the result you want, but you still persevere as you know it might work over time. Has anyone ever done that? Just played the big picture, you know, and, and stayed true and yeah, cool, love that, fantastic. We're all slightly on the same page. Okay, have you ever lost motivation too early on and given up, creating the gap between the gain and your overall success? Has anyone ever? Yep. Yes, fantastic, cool. So, same page, yeah, yeah. We're all on the same page, and that's, that's what I want to do today. I want to make sure every single one of us is sitting down comfortably, leaning against each other and being like, you know what, we're all part of something big here. It's a big community, and that's the thing. All three of us have came together to bring you guys together, because we all share very similar values. So today, we want to dump, dump? We want to jump into understanding what the actual problem is in which every single one of us, as a team, face. Okay, and that's what I want to, I want to dispel that. So, a problem that a lot of people do struggle with in life right now, and we're swimming in a sea of comparison, surface level goal setting, and playing it too finite. You know, have you ever been uh, beaten, like waking up in the morning, looked on social media, and you know, seen somebody looking fantastic, loving this life, luxury, boats, great body. Yeah, we all seen that, and we're like, it'd be nice to have that. It'd be quite nice to have that, wouldn't it? Or we ever, you know, set surface level goals in hope of, you know, just because, let's say for example, Ginny down the street started getting in good shape. She's like, I want to get in good shape because she's done it and it's not really deep enough for you. It doesn't really allow you to buy into the goal behind the reason why you actually want to do it. Okay, or playing it too finite. You play things too small. Okay, you're not playing big enough here. You're not actually putting yourself in a position where you have to grow in to the situation, you hold yourself small, you can put yourself in this little box and de uh, decompartmentalize yourself and put yourself in a wee box and stuff over there. Have you ever done that? Potentially. Maybe? It's just me? Okay. So today's mission statement, which is uh, a really good mission statement, if I'm not going to lie, what we want to look at is getting never-ending motivation. How good would that be? We all want never-ending motivation, get up and fucking smash it every single day, never have anyone hold us back. And pretty much we're just like, we're just killing it. Would, would, do we all want that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'm sorry, guys. Imagine that. It's not going to fucking happen. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is ever going to have never-ending motivation. So sorry to burst your little metaphorical, uh, metaphorical bubble, but it just can't happen. But I want to give you something, okay? I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you a really good chance to look at things in a different light. Because I know, personally from my experience, over a decade of personal development, creating curiosity, and trying to get myself to a point where I feel the best I possibly could myself, then if I can give you some of that, <laughs> you're all going to be winning. At least a little bit more than you already are. So, I want to completely flip your way of thinking today. So you all leave feeling a little bit more equipped for the week ahead, for the year ahead, for whatever life throws at you. Because when we're stuck in this little ball or bubble or whatever you want to call it of just thinking too small you're never going to get where you want to be so guys hopefully by the time you walk out this door tonight full stomachs well refreshed you feel very for the week ahead in a completely different way than you ever have so today we're going to talk about the cause and effect of not taking action forget the words on your physical and psychological health and well-being on the long term does that sound cool ribbit ribbit <laughs> Yeah, sounds quite cool to me. Anyway, I'm going to take a wee uh, drink of this uh, whiskey and coke. Skitty, thank you very much, brother. Um, and I want, to, I want to set the scene for a wee second here. And has anyone ever seen Rocky? Like, you know, he's the boxer Sylvester Stallone. I actually sent a picture of uh, Sylvester Stallone to Chris the other day. That's the guy, that's the body we're looking for, you know. Um, but yeah, we, we, we've all seen Rocky. 
And has anyone ever like seen the first one or the second one? It doesn't really fucking matter, but we, we've seen it, right? And after you're like, you know what? Tomorrow's the day. I'm, I'm joining that gym. I'm going to the boxing gym. I'm going to go a run. I'm going to do something. But you're so, you're so motivated off the back of seeing Rocky because he, he's up and at it. He's killing it. This guy doesn't need motivation. He doesn't. He just, he wants it. He's playing the big picture. He always goes one more. So we always put a lot of our, not our self-worth, but we put a lot of our, our energy on to things that will give us short-term motivation, but not take us into the perspective of understanding that we need, you know, delayed gratification for the big picture. Because we can't just wake up and watch Rocky Free every day if we're not feeling motivated for work, for relationships, for your training. Imagine that. You had to watch a three-hour feature film before you go to the gym every day. Would that work for you? No, not at all. So, putting that to the side, now that we understand. And the way, I'm, the way I'm framing this today is a wee bit like reverse psychology, right? And a lot of coaches, a lot of people, generally wouldn't like to think of the negatives, right? But I'm, I love negatives, right? Because today if we can flip the positives to a negative, then I can actually give you or install the idea and the philosophy behind never needing motivation to, again to do anything. Because just like brushing your teeth, you don't, you don't need motivation for that, right? You know these gnashers of yours need to last you the rest of your life. So is your fucking body, right? So we need to look at things in a light of turning the positive to a negative. So, team, what's the downside of an action? You know, think about this for a little second here. What is the downside of not looking after your health, your mindset, your well-being for the big picture? Imagine being in a flux of always just doing it for a certain thing. Oh, I'll do it for this wee holiday. I'll shift some body fat to fit into that dress for the night out. Or I'll starve myself for a couple of weeks just to fit into the dress because I want to look sexy for my night out. You know, something like that. <laughs> okay. But I want to give you guys, or what is, no, no, let me rewind loose. You're here, okay. I want to give you guys understanding of the downsides of, like the potential downsides, would be never reaching your potential. So untapped potential, you might never lean into that and fulfill it. Or you might have a social and psychological disconnect. In social situations, relationships, you might just never feel 100% yourself. So you never really get to the point in your life where you feel happy being you, okay? And again, I, I've, I've suffered from that a lot. I used to be, I say this to a lot of the guys inside the team, it's, 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 it's false confidence, you know? You're only confident when you've had a drink. You're only confident, look at me, I've got a drink before coming up tonight. Um, <laughs> but false confidence, I used to be the guy, you know, I started getting in shape when I was a bit younger, but I still wasn't confident with myself. You know, I'd go to these parties and I'd be the guy getting so fucked up, like drinking a bottle of whiskey or something, and everyone would maybe have a bottle of Mad Dog, and I'd be like, nah, I'm the guy that's going hard tonight. Because I, it made me feel confident, right? And it made me disconnect. And it didn't allow me to really just be happy with who I was, really. And it made everything a lot harder in life, okay? And it's always, again, Sylvester was probably going to do it better than me, but identity, I wasn't happy with my identity, man. And you kind of led me into saying this as well, but you might even have low self-worth. You know, you wake up, you don't really give a shit about yourself. I've had so many clients over the past years that they don't trust themselves enough, don't believe in themselves enough. And, you know, Christian led that in really nicely, but you just don't have that get up and go because you don't really like yourself. And why is that? I don't want that to happen to anyone, okay? So from there, you might even lack confidence and lack purpose. Like I think for me, a massive thing is living life with purpose. And when I see people not live with purpose, I really feel there's a huge disconnect between who they are, where they could be. And I want to bridge that gap today and make sure you guys feel absolutely fantastic doing anything you want in your life going forward. So, if you resonate with any of what I've just said, if you resonate with anything I've just said there, you might feel like a well-presented piece of shit, okay? And if you feel like that, then cheers to everyone, because I've felt that way before. Cheers, cheers, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Okay, so if you feel like a well-presented piece of shit, then we're all on the same page, or if you have done, you're past fantastic, because I've felt that way too. So take a second, turn to the person next to y'all and uh, ask, ask them, have you experienced any of those before? Low purpose, low confidence, low self-worth. Look around you guys. Look to the, the sister on your right or the brother on your left. 
How are we getting on? <laughs> how are we how are we getting on good? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Really good, mate. <laughs> you ever felt like a well presented piece of shit? <laughs> you ever felt like a piece of shit? We all felt like pieces of shit before? Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now that we can all agree, at least at one stage of our life, we've all felt like a well-presented piece of shit, then thank God we're all on the same page again. I feel a lot of comfort in that, knowing that everyone else has felt that way. Okay, so let's dive in. How good would it be to change the destiny of your future health? Imagine you had the opportunity to do that today. I think all of you do, but imagine that. Because some people doubt themselves into the point that inaction is the only action they take, and it holds them back from getting to where they want to go in life. And if you are super clear and understand that, then today's your opportunity to lean into something that you never thought was possible. So what's the framework? And again, Christian was saying a lot of stuff about woo-woo. I'm a very woo-woo person. I used to take a lot of psychedelics and smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> That's just me. But <laughs> I need to give you a framework, otherwise all of this makes no sense whatsoever. So let me dive into this for you guys and hopefully equip you with what I want to equip you with. So we want to focus on what won't happen rather than what will, okay? In life, we always look at jobs, fitness, everything. We're like, you know, if I do this fitness journey, I'm going to have abs, I'm going to look great, I'll have this confidence, I'll have this energy, and it's all great. And it's like, if I do this job and I work these hours and I get this money, I'll be able to do this. <laughs> it's all like, all right, cool, right, that's cool. But what's not going to fucking happen, right? If you don't do nothing and you live the rest of your life, playing it small, not happy with your body, not happy with your state of health, your well-being, your energy. What is going to happen to you, your family, the people you love and care about, and the potential position you could be in in your own, like the rest of your life? Like what, what is going to happen, right? Because when we can refresh ourselves with that idea and understand why the action needs to be taken, because the potential downsides are so scarily huge, then we're always going to take action, okay? We're always going to do the thing we know we need to do, despite the pain, despite the discomfort, because the overarching goal behind making that change is so strong that it could make you cry, you know? It could really just propel you into taking action, because that emotion that you feel when you know you're not living your life to your best, that should really make you want to fucking dance, you know? Light a fire under your ass, okay? So, has anyone ever done this? Has anyone ever actually flipped the positive to a negative to realise what is going to happen to their life if they don't do something about the position they potentially are in. Has anyone ever done that? A couple of nods. Yeah? 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 Maybe a hands up. I like that. Again, those marpets. Some. Not all. Maybe 50%. Cool. Cool. Also, has anyone ever set unrealistic expectations in themselves? Yeah, fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Unrealistic expectations will kill you, will kill your happiness, will kill your courage, kill your confidence, and we're all bad for it. I've set so many unrealistic expectations with body, with business, with lifestyle, with relationships. I used to think, uh, I don't know, I don't know what I expected from this, this life, this crazy life that we're living in, and I feel for a long time I set the bar so high that I always failed, and that really got me in a spot where I wasn't happy, and it's all about lowering those expectations, guys, but again, that's for another day. Has anyone not set goals big enough? You know, maybe I just want to lose two pounds so I can be under the 10 stone bracket. Or maybe I just want to, you know, have a think, guys. Who's ever set some shitty little goals? It's not even motivated them to take any action. Yeah, cool. Thank God we're all on the same page. But when you set these little, tiny, insignificant goals, there's no reason why you're going to do them. You've got no accountability, nothing big enough and bold enough to actually make you want to change, okay? And then from there, you may have also experienced or done, oh, sorry, have I skipped one? Nah, it doesn't matter, I'll lead on. Anyway, when the goal is bigger than the problem, you will always find a solution to the problem, okay? Think about that, if you have such a strong goal, if you have such a big vision and mission in your life for you to become the very best version of yourself so you can impact those that you love and care about, so you can lead from the front, so you can have the job you're deserving of, you can have the partner that actually respects you because you respect yourself, and you actually follow through on actions each and every day to live your life to your actual potential and purpose, then 
It's a no brainer guys, you're always gonna wake up and be like, you know what, despite what I'm feeling on this shitty little day, I'm still gonna be able to smash it because this goal that is so deep and close to me is gonna, like, it's gonna empower you. It's gonna empower you to get where you wanna go, okay? And for a long time, I didn't set goals big enough and it led me just to coast. Go round in circles, round in circles and fall into old traps, old habits and old ways of thinking. So, what's the solution then, Lewis? I, I like to ask myself questions. It's just the way my brain works. Anyway, I'll tell you, but it's going to cost you. <laughs> no, what we do, we don't just keep running away from pain, okay? We don't just shit that, that horrible thing that I don't want to fall into. We can't just always run away from it, right? Otherwise, we're going to get exhausted. Everyone's got a finite amount of energy that they can use for things like decision making and actually setting goals and stuff like that. So it's just like anything. And if you've, you've been on a call, uh, if you're working a call center on it or something, you're asking questions all day and you burn yourself out, you won't have like enough bandwidth to even say what you want for dinner that night. Hence why you go and have the cookies every night and you come home, you cup of tea and eat biscuits before you have your dinner and stuff. Cause you're just, you're just heads fucked, right? So do we just keep running away from pain? No, we don't. We have to take actions and understand the insights behind what is going to allow this shift, this framework to actually make sense to you guys so you can feel your best, live your best, and operate at your best. So, let's play the infinite game with your life's goals, overall health, and energy. So the word infinite means forever. <laughs> I'm not here saying you're gonna live forever. I'm gonna live forever. No, <laughs> this is, that's what I told Amy, I promised her I wasn't gonna sing. I promised I wasn't <laughs> gonna sing. Um, but yeah, I want, I want you guys to live life more infinitely, okay? And from there, we can have that full life affair, okay? Because we don't want to fall into a trap of playing things too finite and small that we're always just chasing our tail, trying to just do it for that next wee thing, that next wee thing, only ticking that box rather than dominating the rest of your entire life because when you're in this flux of just doing the bare minimum, you never get the grand maximum, okay? So, if you're not where you want to be in life right now, it's because of a few things, right? Lifestyle, your habits, personal standards, self-talk, good or bad. And then, yeah, has anyone ever experienced that? Like, poor self-talk, poor personal standards. Yeah, a couple of nods, cool. Again, I've felt that way. I've been guilty of it. The coach and the pedestal that all of you guys might look at and be like, you know, his life's fucking sound. He's, he's good, he, he wakes up early, he goes his walk, tinky steps, tinky steps. <laughs> and he drinks his water, three liters a day, my God, he must be hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> right, but the thing is, you can't fucking fix a 12 year train wreck of a life in six weeks. And we're swimming in a sea of six week plans. Drop this, lose that, fall off your fucking bike in six weeks and hurt your knee and you're gonna be transformed and look like a completely different person. Just me? Is it me that's the only person that's like crazy about that? Like six week challenges? I think it's just a load of shit, okay? <laughs> If anyone knows anyone does six, six week challenges, that's fine. Maybe tell them that Lewis hates you. <laughs> anyway, it's simply too finite, guys. And if you're always playing things on a, such a small level, you never give yourself the chance to grow in to the potential in which you could possibly have. And when it's always set against a small time frame, six, 12, 18, whatever it is, what happens when you have your first couple of hurdles, roadblocks, whatever else it may be? Oh, I can't have. I'm not going to be in the shape I want at the end of the six weeks, so there's no point fucking doing it, you know? I've been at this game for a decade. I started weight training, exercising, improving my quality of life when I was at 14, you know? Uh, Christian, I think he used the word flump. Yeah. I call myself a marshmallow. Flumps are like a bit longer. I'm shorter than Christian. I'll be a marshmallow, right? Soft and confident, squidgy. Life would mal like malleable me. Is that even a word? Malleable? I don't know. Anyway, it was simply too finite, guys. I was putting all, you, you put a lot of pressure on yourself to try become this person in a time frame which means nothing to anyone but the person that's created the time frame. So you try be a jigsaw piece in a jigsaw puzzle that doesn't even allow you to fit in. And what, you end up breaking your trust, losing the self-trust with yourself, and next thing you know, you're like, oh my God, this fitness thing is not for me. I'll give up and I'll just stay a potato the rest of my life. I don't want you guys to stay potatoes anymore. I really don't, but the one thing I have, and this is, this, 
my friend David over there, a fantastic friend of mine, um, he says I speak in analogies. And I thought I'd be kind to you guys today and, and give you an insight to one of Lewis McFarlane's little funky analogies, okay? So, you're too fond of sampling your health. So let's set the scene and let me have a drink of this lovely beverage. Right, you're too fond of sampling your health and your fitness and stuff. Imagine it's pre-COVID, right? You're in Morrison's or Sainsbury's, Asda, whatever you shop, depending on, obviously, doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> tangent for another day. You're in Morrison's, you've got a cheese counter, right? Who, lo who loves a wee cheese board at the end of the night? Couple of glasses of wine, grapes, crackers, boom. We're all on the same page, love that shit, right? You go up, it's pre-COVID, you're allowed to go take the wee forks and the wee cheese bits, you're eating some cheese, lovely. You, you crack on with your shop and you leave. But then you go again the next day, eating some cheese, you go away. And then you get invited to a party on, the, on one of the days and you know, you know what, it might be good to buy that cheese for everyone to share with. You know, because that cheese is so nice, I keep going back to it, but I'm not taking the, the full amount of the cheese, right? So you, you sample this cheese time and time again, and you're getting a little bit of the benefit, you're getting the taste, you're getting the pleasure in the moment, and it's like doing like a hit class or something, doing like a spin class. You go and you're like, I burnt my calories for the day. But no, you've just sampled it, right? You've just, you've just kind of like had a wee bit of it, but imagine you bought the whole wheel of fucking cheese you brought it to the house party and everyone could enjoy the cheese. You could enjoy it. You could even take some home for the next day because you've got so much cheese. You see me looking about now. <laughs> but you've got all this cheese and you can share it and, and everyone gets the benefit from it. You get the benefit, I get the benefit and everyone's so happy you got the cheese. And that's like your health and fitness. You can't just do a wee class here. You can't just do one workout here. You can't just eat good for one day. That's just sampling it, right? And that's crap. You want to buy the whole wheel of cheese. You want to eat all the cheese. You want to actually do that with your health and fitness. You want to lean all in and you want to make sure it's yours for the rest of your life because no one else can take your fitness and health away from you because it is the only thing you have and you can lose your job. You can lose your family members. You can lose your whatever. And we've all been through some tough shit in our life. <laughs> but every time my back's been against the wall, I've had the gym. I've had the culture and the community I've had around me. I've had an opportunity to focus. Like, see, when the, the first pandemic happened, that was my opportunity. Again, Christian said it was a, a blessing in disguise or something, but I really enjoyed having that time because everything was ripped from me, but I still had my body, I still had my health, and I had something to improve on. And that's what I want to show you guys today. When everything's gone, when everything's shit, when everything is in the pits of hell, you've got yourself because you can be your own biggest hero, you know? And you can lean against not just the idea of having a little bit of cheese here now and again and saying to you know, Betty, oh, I've done a spin class, done that, spin up there, burned some calories, felt good, but no. They've never had the result. They've never got themselves to a body transformation. They've never got themselves to a point where they've done a performance event. They've never got themselves to a point where they wake up and they just feel happy with the clothes they wear, happy with the way they look, sexy, confident, whatever else and they can actually be comfortable in relationships and their work. And I know so many people that benefit in business and relationships just from improving their mental and physical health. So guys, I don't want you to sample the cheese anymore. Please don't look at that in the big picture and understand that it's an infinite game. Okay, so reverse psychology, we always want to flip things around. Anytime you're feeling low or down in the dumps, good, <laughs> good. You want to feel that way because that should be a wee wake-up call. That should be the alarm bell ringing saying, take a wake the fuck up and do something, okay? Otherwise, you're going to feel a little bit shit forever. Anyway, feels over looks. This is something I've struggled with for a long time. Has anyone ever done that? Like, you know, always just wanted to look a certain way rather than feel a certain way. My boy Jack, yeah. Perfect example, Jack. Like, I'm the exact same as you. I tied all my self-worth to the way I looked for... Years and years and years and years and years took me on a path of bodybuilding and always trying to be, like, you know, under a certain percentage of body fat. You know, I'd even be the guy that would go, this is going to be weird, this is me being vulnerable, hashtag vulnerable. Anyway, go out for dinner, be with like friends and family or whatever else, enjoy myself. I'd go to the, the bathroom sometimes, I'd be like, right, ab check, still got some abs. Ab check, oh, I'm tensed, some fucking arms look good. Do I look like I'm still fit and strong? Certain way. And I've been through this mission for the last wee while of just understanding that success is not a look. 
Success is a feeling in which you guys can have each and every single day. And that comes from the energy, the confidence, the conviction, and the daily habits in which you have and embody so you can feel a certain way. Like nobody gives a shit what weight you are. Nobody gives a shit how you look or feel. They give a shit how good your energy is. Nobody ever remembers what you, you brought or whatever. They, they remember how they, you made them feel, you know? Like how your energy inspired them or made a positive impact or, you know, brightened their day because I, I've been that guy for a lot of people and I've had some seriously lows with my mental health, but I've always been that guy around friends. It's like, oh, you're so uplifting. You, you bring me up and it's, I couldn't do that if it wasn't for my health, my physical health that is. But it's a feeling, guys. It's a, it's a state management we want, okay? Because each and every single one of us, when we're in state, when we're in flow, when we are feeling good with ourselves, everything else in your life will be managed a lot more. And trust me, I was very volatile when I was in the best shape of my life and everyone thought I was crushing it, okay? Which wasn't the case. Subject A on the right hand side, the criminal behind Lewis McFarlane's journey. Very shredded looking guy, six pack abs, veins popping, competing in bodybuilding. On the right hand side, carrying a bucket of cement, muddy knees, big smile on my face. Which one was happier, right or left? Oh, muddy knees. Yes, muddy knees, and it wasn't from doing anything that you're thinking. <laughs> I told you I was going to do some stand-up. Um, but anyway, so many people confuse success with uh, what success can be by putting all their self-worth on their image over their state. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to know so many people in this room today that have, you know, achieved a life-changing body transformation, but now focus on how they feel each and every single day and how they show up because... It's not about looking a certain way. Again, that has a huge bloody impact, but once you achieve that checkpoint, fantastic. You can manage your state, you can manage your energy. And I think a lot of us guys here, the coaches, we always like to provide the, uh, each team member with the understanding of you should always be ready, right? Train everything ready for anything. You should always be about eight to 12 weeks away from actually getting to where you wanna be, whether it be to run a certain distance, look a certain way, or perform at a certain level, okay? And again, when you tie yourself worth to the way you look, it's only ever going to be an enjoyable life when you look good, right? And from my experience, when you're on 1,600 calories, doing 20,000 steps a day, training seven days a week, your life's pretty fucking shit. <laughs> and if that's what makes you happy or that's what you think is going to make you happy, then you're in for a life of unfulfilled purpose, potential, and you're not going to be living life true to your values. And that's just simple as, okay? So your health gives you two options, guys. Okay, you ever had, you ever got to a point in your life where it's like a fork in the road and you, you need to make a decision over the other, it's like make or break, has anyone ever been through something like that, like, oh, do I, do I break up with my ex-partner, do I, you know, do this job, do I leave this job, like, we always can come into a fork in the road sometimes, and with your health, it gives you a chance to either be inferior or superior, you can have an inferior level of health and feel like uh, an emotional, lethargic, wreck all the time <laughs> or you can feel fantastic and i'm not gonna lie it's not all sunshine and rainbows getting in shape it's really hard to get there trust me but you're going to be in a much better position for managing your overall energy state and life when your life energy is better when you are thriving with your body thriving with the food you're eating thriving with the lifestyle you have and that's when you're going to start really self-actualizing and becoming the person you want to be on the long term the infinite game you know so which one do you guys choose Inferior or superior? Shout. Yes. Yes, yeah, superior. Right. Thank fuck you said superior because if you all said inferior, I'd leave that door faster than Amy left when she's getting a glass of rosy. Okay. So do we just throw shit at a wall and see if it sticks? It's not a fun image. Like a monkey in a zoo. Anyway. If we continuously just try different things for a short period of time, and like, it's like people who read 110 self-development books and don't fucking action anything. You're just wasting your time. You're consistently trying a little bit of something and not getting anywhere with understanding that it's the big things done consistently over time. But the big things are pretty much the little things. But see, when you do loads of little, like a class here or a program there or this or that or this and just keep jumping about like you're on a pogo stick or something 
you're never going to land anything that actually counts and actually makes you change and develop. It's just, it just it's not going to work for you guys. And that's when you always repeat the same behaviors and cycles and self-talk and your confidence doesn't grow. And people are like, why am I not there yet? Why am I not where I want to be? Well, you're changing everything too much all the time. You need to have consistency. You need to have flow. You need to give yourself the courage and trust within yourself to play your health and fitness over the course of the rest of your life rather than just doing it for a little bit of time, okay? So choose transformational over transactional. Again, I'm being hard on those guys that sell six-week plans, I'm sorry. But when it's six-week this, six-week that, do this, do that, you pay for a class, you go and do this, you're paying for something that you're going to get in the moment, whereas transformational is when you're playing the big picture game for the rest of your life and you transform not only your body but your mindset and can sustain and maintain the habits for the rest of your life so you can become who you truly want to be. Does that sound cool? Yeah. yeah. Nice one, guys. Nice one. I love that. So my mission, and again, I, I was going to keep it short, and I know I said my mission was all about motivation and stuff, and that was fake, but in, in my life, my mission is to help men and women build a you know, jaw-dropping physique, something they can feel proud of, something they can sustain and maintain for the rest of their life, but not only that, just so they can show up strong and confidently within themselves, whilst living with more purpose, following through in their potential and operating on a higher physical and psychological level. Sounds like an absolute mouthful. But to me, like every, every day I, I wake up and I, I look at that, that's what I'm fucking doing. That's what I'm hopefully helping every single one of these people, like, like all you guys here today, to just maybe change your mind that little bit so you can embody the transformation over the rest of your life rather than just a short period of time. And I'm not saying sprint goals aren't good. You can, you know, if I, I had to lose like a stone in a certain period of time, it's maybe sometimes good to push that. But look at the big picture, guys, because see if you just keep running towards the end of the cliff, you're going to fall off it one day. And the chance of you recovering from that, but that big, okay? That big. So why is this going to work, guys? Why is everything I've just said going to actually work? I hope it does, because it's going to give you clarity. It's going to give you understanding, because see when you play things too small, you can only see to the end of that little goal. Right, if I tick that box, I'll be happy. No, it's not the case. When you have clarity over what your life needs to look like and feel like, rather than what it, you know, rather what you achieve in the set period of time where you have a body transformation, you get lean or something, you can look at your life on the big picture and understand that you have all the time in the world to become the person you want to be. So take the pressure off yourself. Because a lot of guys say to me when they come on board, you know, we do a, a six month minimum to start because I know I can change somebody's life in that time but they come to me because they need me but they stay because they know there's so much more for themselves to accomplish they, they, it's such a big picture game and I'm always setting the goal one after the other one after the other and you have clarity with how you can be not only in one year but in 10 years time so each bad habit you actually have needs to be analyzed and confronted so you can realize the negative effects it's having on your life, your purpose, and your existence. Does anyone have some really shitty habits that they, they don't want to ever tell anyone? Yeah, some weird things that happen on a Wednesday night after you've had a stressful day at work. It might not even just be a bottle of wine, it might be something really weird. I used to do a lot of weird things. <laughs> a lot of weird things. Not anymore though. Not me. At the end of the day, right? <laughs> We we uh, vibe check. Mm, thank you, Skitty. Anyway, at the end of the day, guys, you're the most important person in the room. Okay? Take a second, check in with yourself. That's me checking in with myself. I'm here, I'm present. I'm with every single one of you guys, right? And if something is not where you want it to be, you need to have fierce self-compassion. This is something I've learned more recently with our in-house uh, psychotherapist, Gene, that helps inside the community. But you need to have fear, self-compassion with yourself so you can tell yourself when you need to fucking do the work and when you need to pull back with things. But not only that, you need to forgive yourself, guys. If you guys have a, a train wreck, like I said earlier, of a life up until this point today and you're just like, shit, you know, that has been my life, then, you know, give yourself some credit. You've made it this far. Drop the baggage, the negative, the emotional, all the stress that comes with it 
and realize it's your personal responsibility to take action on making a change. And hopefully all you guys are not falling asleep after all that amazing scran you've had, because we're nearly done, but I want you to understand everything I say moving forward. So we've got to work through the ranks. Oh yeah. Anyone ever done like karate, kickboxing, Muay Thai, anything that involves a belt? Okay, and I was saying this to my man Chris, um, client of mine there, about working through the ranks, right? Right now, you might feel like a bit of a white belt. You know, fuck all, you maybe know how to do a wee And that may be like, I know how to track my calories. I know how to go 10K steps. I learned how to do that. I know, my, I know my route. You know, you're like super low level and you know a little bit about how to do something. And that's cool, that's great. But you have to work through the ranks because when you're playing your life in the big picture, you can't just be a white belt forever. You want to get to coral belt, you want to get to black belt, and you want to go through the stages of transformation that is over the course of the rest of your life. And it might not always be physical based. There's going to be months, weeks, years that you have to pull back and focus more on your mindset because that needs to work. There might be time when you have to push forward in the physical front because you know things are coming up. But you always want to be in a flux and change of iteration, knowing that you guys can accomplish anything you want in life based off the values you have uh, inside your, yourself. And, what you share with other people, you know? So you gotta work through the ranks, guys, and you have gotta go through the systems, the change. Every time you go up a belt, your values can change a little bit. Your ethos can change a little bit. The people you surround yourself can change a little bit. Everything can change. It can be iterated over time. As long as you don't burn too many bridges along the way, because I've done that. I've, I've fallen out with people. Not fallen out, but just distanced and disconnected with so many people I grew up with, just from getting fit and in, in shape because my values changed. Doesn't mean we had a punch up or something. It's like, you got a six pack, so I fucking hate you, man. It wasn't the case, it was not the case. It was like, I, I just like doing a bit of this, you like doing a bit of that, cool, cool. And you can just work through those ranks knowing that you've got the rest of your life to do so, and you're gonna become a black belt. Every single one will become a black belt if you want it, but please don't discount yourself thinking you have to stay a white belt forever, because it's not, and that's it's pretty lame. The classes at white belt level, pfft, crap. Anyway, we've got to silence the inner critique. Has anyone ever got that voice in their head every time they maybe wake up on a Monday morning? It's like, nah, mate, as soon as the alarm call in sick, should have went a walk this morning to get ready for the day, but I patched it. Has anyone got that inner critic? I call it the inner bitch. Yeah? Thumbs up. Cool. Thumbs up, fingers up. Pew. Anyway, you've got to silence the inner critic first and foremost because that voice inside your head is always going to be there. But if you can cast more votes for the one of the person you want to be, then you're going to start being that one. The only reason you've got that negative thought or uh, thought process in your head is because you believe it. And like you said earlier, Christian, you start believing the stories you tell yourself and it's not going to allow you to get where you want to be, is it? No, so we need to learn how to silence that. And there's a few wee tricks and tips I'll show you on how to do that soon. But for right now, we'll move on. You want to be a blood town for the big picture. Whatever your big picture, grand life mission and vision goal looks like, and again, I, I go over this very deeply with every client I work with if you've came to the lives, the webinars, but we dive deep into where you want to be in five years, 10 years, 15 years, and the rest of your life. Because when you have clarity on that, and again, it can change, it can, it can iterate over time, you will always be in a flux of growth and wanting the best outcome for yourself despite what is happening in your life. And as I said earlier, when the goal is bigger than the problem, you're always going to find a solution. So you become a bloodhound for wanting to improve yourself. You get so focused, so convicted, and you're on a relentless mission to become your best, right? And that's when you're going to start thriving. And again, that kind of takes me up to the point here. Tricks and tips. So who wants my top five? Maybe five, maybe a wee extra one in there for you. Who wants my top five mind, body, and lifestyle tips that I've curated from a decade of self-development, creating curiosity, and collecting confidence. Who wants them? You want, you want some tips? Yeah, cool. Right, let's get some tips going, right? Numero one, start in the morning, ode to self. I'm a massive proponent on journaling, gratitude, life lessons, reflecting on the day, right? Because at the end of the day, you only got the day you're living in, you know? So you may as well make it a good one, right? I always start my day, and this is a maybe a, journaling technique no one has ever used. I told my brother about this and he's like, dude, that's fucking amazing. I've never heard of that in my life. But I write an ode to myself every morning. And I am my own motivation, my own intrinsic motivation because it develops inside me through everything I've done in the past, everything I'm gonna do in the future and everything I've done on this day. So an ode to yourself is basically a 
verbal line of cocaine, right? <laughs> it's something you can create for yourself in the morning to give you that perk or upper you need, right? So you start off a couple of lines, you say, today Lewis McFarlane is gonna wake up, kick ass, nail it, close deals, get clients, build a business, do everything, like, and just, just write this almost like crazy letter to yourself. That's like, you know what, that's fucking quite cool. And it could be for the mothers out here, the fathers out here, the, the people who are just getting started. It's like, today I'm gonna action this. I'm gonna be the best mom I possibly could. I'm gonna organize my shit. I'm actually gonna meal prep today so I don't just grab a, another coffee and burn myself out and feel so lethargic and throw an oven meal in again. I'm, I'm actually gonna get ahead of it. Like, when you write that ode to yourself, you write a letter to yourself because you believe in you. And when you believe in you, you win, okay? So that's number one. We've got another one here, and it's like your life is like a bookcase. So imagine a bookshelf. You've got a front end and a back end. That's your morning routine, that's your evening routine. If you have a really, if you don't even have an, a morning and evening routine, the books, they're gonna fall. They're gonna fall either way. They're gonna be a mess. They're never gonna be held upright. And each and every day, we wanna hold ourselves upright based off our habits, our principles, our ethos, and how we live our life. So that front and back end, make sure you've got a morning routine put in place. And I don't want you guys to be heavily reliant on routines to make or break your day, because I've been that guy before that's had the six hour morning routine. But you wanna have a couple of actionable steps that allow you to serve yourself first and foremost in the morning. And at the end of the night, if everything goes to shit, you can still check in with yourself and have a couple of nice wee things in the nighttime. So you can wind down, go to bed, and not have that inner critic tell you why you've had such a shit day and beat yourself up and you stay up all night, go on your phone and go in a horrible rabbit hole of all sorts. Anyway, discomfort over pain, guys. Every day we have an option or a choice to actually lean in to a little bit of uncomfortable stuff. So like for discomfort, for instance, just going on a walk, it's uncomfortable in the morning when it's cold and it's dark and wrapping up and putting your earphones in and listening to a Modern Wisdom podcast or something, going a wee walk and getting yourself started. That's, just, that's uncomfortable, right? But the pain of not taking action on that should be much bigger because if you miss your steps for the rest of your life, if you miss the gym for the rest of your life, if you miss eating good meals for the rest of your life, you're going to be in a world of fucking pain. You're going to be bent out of shape. You're going to be lethargic. Your energy is going to be shit. You're probably going to have more body fat than you need. And you're going to be like, oh, I don't have my, my get up and go. So make sure, guys, that you're choosing discomfort. Because when you choose discomfort, that's when you build confidence and trust with yourself because you're consistently leaning into challenge rather than putting your head in the sand. And you know what happens when everyone puts their head in the sand? See your ass, okay? Because your head's in the fucking sand and your ass is up in the air. Anyway, the situation you're in isn't bad. Has anyone ever been in a bad situation and be like, why me? The world is over. Somebody help me. I need the patron savior. Has anyone ever felt that way? Like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, that's, not, that's not actually a bad thing. I think like, bad situations are epic. They really are. Because it gives you a chance to obviously learn the lessons, grow, challenge yourself. But your response to the situation is what will make or break the deal. Okay? So there's always going to be an element of understanding that whatever life has thrown at you, pushed on you, or given you, you either sink or swim. And sometimes... You're going to sink for a little bit before you start swimming. But see, when you're getting pulled down, <laughs> that's when you're going to get strong as fuck because you're going to go against that current. And you're going, to get, you're going to keep going against that current. And one day, that strength that you've been building through the hard times, that's what's going to allow you to self-actualize and lean into the good times when they come, okay? So always realize your response is very crucial to anything that life throws at you. And then success, guys, is a feeling, not a look, right? I've been at this a decade since I was 14, and honestly, reflecting back, if I could go back to my 14-year-old self, I would say, honestly, you're gonna go through a lot of change, a lot of growth, a lot of personal development, you're gonna have an amazing life with a lot of amazing people around you all the time, but ultimately, if you base all your happiness and self-worth off how you look or how shredded you are for Ibiza or whatever else it may be, it's pretty lame, pretty lame life. Lame, lame, lame. <laughs> I've avoided eye contact with you all this. All this. Right, last one, guys, before I drop the mic. Anyway, I felt like uh, not so slim shaded today. Knees weak, arms are heavy, sweaty palms. <laughs> I think I drank 
Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Anyway, guys, <clears throat> secret extra one. I couldn't just leave you without more value. Anyway, whatever baggage, blah, blah, whatever baggage, stress, problems you have, ask yourself, if you continue doing what you're doing today for the next 365 days, are you going to be closer to your goal? Take a, take a wee second and like, just check in with yourself and just think, like, is the actions you have each and every day pushing you towards your goal or moving you further away? Note it down, check in with yourself, do what I do to check in with myself. <laughs> don't, maybe don't do that, you look weird. But yeah, there we go. Is there any more? Potentially. Thank you, Lewis. But uh, no, nah, I appreciate that, those guys. I'm not going to lie, I've been uh, sweating for a month. <laughs> sweating for a month. And uh, that Slim Shady joke was meant to come in at the start. <clears throat> guys, what a crowd. Thank you all so much for being here today. It's, it's, it's meant the world for me to be able to stand up here in front of you guys and not shit myself. <laughs> um, with that as well, I would love to do what Christian did. I, I would have had like questions, but... Shoot some questions, guys. I'm here to chat. I would love to hear your take-homes, any feedback you have, or even just go around the tables and discuss it with you. So I'm going to give you a wee second to wind down, have a wee chat amongst yourself, and I'll, I'll mingle around the tables and check in with you. So thanks again, guys. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Oh. Fucking proud of yourself, man. That was really good. Was Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Good, really? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good. I thought it was a, a good wee flow. No, it was good. I definitely...